life, Lord. All I am, all my hopes, all my dreams, all that I'll ever be, it's wrapped up in you. So I ask you, God, to help me today, Lord, as I present myself to you, Lord. May I present a body that's that's fit for you, the temple of the Holy Spirit, a, 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 a spirit man that represents you well, that I might have truly a body for God. Pray, God, that you'd help us in this today. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Thank you, praise team. It is my joy and privilege to have some of the greatest people to work with. Give the Lord praise for that. You don't know the hours and hours that goes into making all of that happen. And uh, these guys, the, the blood, sweat, and tears they put into it, I'm just so thankful. And it's not just me, it's not just Adam, uh, but it's uh, all of these are putting in time and um, trying to do what we do for the Lord with great excellence. And so I'm excited about that. Uh, I do want to be, I would be remiss if I didn't mention Sister Shirley Pippin. Um, not being with us today, she's, she's beat us to heaven. Uh, she was a dear saint of God that um, I enjoyed serving her as her pastor for the last number of years. Uh, in February of 07, I preached her husband Bob's funeral. And um, uh, anyway, we just had a great time together. Um, she went on to be with the Lord, and we had her funeral here on Friday. And I know it was many of you were working, but thank you for... Um, for those who come, those who have uh, expressed their condolences. The family asked that uh, memorial donations be made to the Guatemala Project uh, in her name and in her honor. So if you um, missed out on being here or sending a flower or whatever, um, they want you to send um, um, a donation to the Guatemala Project so you can give it to the harbor, and we make sure every dime that comes in is marked Guatemala Project. It goes into a separate fund uh, out of the operating expenses, and uh, so um, we're excited about the trip. Please remember one more time, if you're planning Guatemala trip, going with us, please, please, please meet me right here, right after the service uh, this morning. It's very important. Also, uh, uh, Brother Josh will mention this uh, as he closes. But we're putting on a softball tournament. Uh, Scott Teston is putting it on. He's got some guys helping him. Lots of teams are, are, are coming aboard, getting involved in that. I'd like our church to put in a team or two as well. Uh, you may sign up for that at the Connection Center. Uh, I don't know if he's here today, but I talked with John Cash and Shane, Shane Schumann. Uh, I see Shane uh, about uh, heading up our local team, and I see Angela Kabilka. I know Kenny. Uh, would probably be involved as well. If I know him and a softball is nearby, he's going to be close to it. So uh, anyway, I'm so thankful for these guys that uh, have a lot of connections to, to draw people to this very, very worthy project. And so thank you for it. Well, uh, welcome today to the Harbor Worship Center. And again, if you don't know who I am, I'm Mike Sains, the lead pastor here. And uh, we're talking about um, Bod for God. I had a man ask me yesterday, he said, Pastor, what is that? I mean, of course, he don't come to church here, but he said, what, what, what is that? What are, you, what are you talking about? And I said, well, I'm talking about your body, a body for God. And then more than that, not just the physical body, but the spiritual body. Because uh, we all have a uh, physical body, we all have a spiritual body. Some of us are more in shape than others in the respective body. Are y'all hearing me say Amen. You might have a bodybuilder that has this wonderful physique, but spiritually he's wormy. Amen? And then you might have this wormy fellow, uh, or, you know, that wears a size 1 or whatever. Maybe that's girl sizes. Maybe he wears a 28 or something. I don't know. But nonetheless, he, he's a stalwart of a man. He's a general in God's army. So, uh, but I want to talk with you about these four keys to achieving a better body. Now, I want you to turn with me to 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4, and we're going to talk about that today. And our main thrust today is talking about eating and exercise. Now, we got the first part down. Y'all, eat and exercise. Now, we, 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 you know, we just eat square. Eat and eat. <laughs> eat and eat, right? But eat and exercise. Now, the problem is we all like to do number one, and we, follow, we seldom follow through with the exercise part of it. 
But uh, I believe there's probably a study guide in your notes there. You can follow along. If, if, if it's not there, you can get it from the office. Uh, but if you haven't taken out and used that, you can follow along with me. But let me remind you a very special announcement. <clears throat> My friend, who I met about a year ago, actually, uh, Brother Steve Reynolds, the author of Bod for God, Losing to Live and Get Off the Couch, he's going to be here Friday. I'm going to be here. Now, I want to tell you something. I've got a whole lot of traveling to do between now and Friday, but I'm going to be here Friday night. And um, I want you to come. And you might say, well, Pastor, I've got both bods worked out. I've got a physical body for God. I've got a spiritual body for God. Then I need you to come here and be our cheerleader. All right? Uh, we want everybody that will to come. It's open to the community. Uh, Brother Steve is flying down from Annandale, Virginia. He pastors Capital, uh, Capital Baptist Church where he's been the senior pastor for 32 years. And um, he tells about how he took that church, uh, you know, right out of college after seminary. And he played football. And he said, I quit playing football after I got out of college. And I kept eating like a football player. I went to my church and my small church began to grow. And he said, the problem was, so did I. He ended up weighing 340 pounds. He did not have a bond for God. So, but anyway, Steve is going to be with us this coming Friday night, June the 6th at 7 p.m. I would love to see all of you guys here about 30 minutes early. You know why? You've got people from all over the community that's going to be coming to your church for the very first time. I would love for them to have a very good first impression with lots of smiling harborites saying hello and welcome to the harbor. Are you all with me? So that, that's the plan. Whether or not you're part of first impressions on Friday night, I've just deputized all of you to be part of the first impressions, to meet and greet people here uh, on Friday night as we welcome uh, Brother Steve Reynolds, and he's going to be speaking from right here. We also have two life groups, and prob probably we'll end up with more because we're going to open it to the community. And every how many people sign up, we're going to accommodate it. So um, uh, I'm looking forward to that. So, but anyway, eating and exercise, which is really talking about managing your habits. <clears throat> managing your habits. Now, it takes a while to make a habit. Y'all with me? Say amen. <clears throat> if you get out of the habit of going to church, it takes a long time for me to get you back in it. If you get out of the habit of paying your tithe, it's a whole long series for you to get back in it. Um, if you get out of the habit of uh, doing things around the house pretty soon, uh, you, you know, it takes a good while and you, you know what I'm talking about. But it's so very critical and important to have a body for God that we control our eating habits, that we manage our habits. Are you with me? Say amen. i got to say I'm, I'm proud of Brother Frank. Raise your hand there, Brother Frank. He's on our pastoral staff. He went down to Jacksonville yesterday. Was it Jacksonville? And he represented the harbor. He was uh, walking in this 5K, and he finished it in under an hour. We ought to give him a hand, would you? Come on now. So he said, man, I'm sore today. That means you're doing good. Huh? Progress, progress. So the basis of this, and we're going to talk in, in just a moment, uh, we're going to be looking at that scripture in 1 Thessalonians, but the Bible says in Colossians 1 and 16 that we were created through God. God created us, <clears throat> so we're created by God, and we are created for God. So you've got to understand that everybody has, uh, you know, everybody grasps that, well, not everybody, but I mean some people don't get it, but we were created by God. I don't care what they say. We have more evidence to prove that than any scientist on any other uh, idea or mental tangent that they may run upon. Are you with me? Say amen. But, but God created us, not just, not did he just create us, he created us for him. And you heard me say this uh, uh, last week or the week before, we talked about developing a lifestyle for the Lord. A body for God lifestyle. Let me say this. How many of you remember, and don't raise your hand now, just don't even shake your head, but you remember back when you used to just carouse and you were the biggest liar, the biggest cheater, you ran around, you hated people, you were mad at your boss, you cussed him out every chance you got, and you did all those terrible things. Don't raise your hand. <laughs> I see some of y'all thinking, yeah, that was me. And then you got saved. And all of a sudden, man, you begin to, you, you, you felt convicted and, and you said, man, I can't talk like that no more, man. Jesus lives in my heart. I can't act like that. I can't be snorting all that stuff. I used to, y'all with me? Brother Mike had his bag of, uh, 
I think it's baby powder. At least that's what he said it is for his fingers with a guitar. I don't know if it is or not, but I'm going to put a line out here. No, I'm only teasing. <laughs> but those things you used to do, the, the Bible says you're now ashamed of uh, because you, you, you felt convicted because you say, man, I don't need to be, you know, going out drinking and staggering down the road and being arrested for public drunkenness and all of this stuff. But why? Because he lives in here. The Bible says the kingdom of God is with men. Jesus lives in my heart. This body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And I asked you the other week, that when would we get mad? When would we get motivated? I think it was last week we talked about inspiration and all that because the first week we talked about uh, the word diet. D being dedication, where we honor God with our body. I being inspiration, where we motivate ourselves for change. Somebody's got to get motivated. How many of you brothers and sisters have ever been to boot camp? Let me see your hand. Military boot camp. You know what they did? They motivated us. I'll never forget. They motivated us. My first night there, I fell asleep, wondering what in the world I had done. And at probably 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock, I don't know, but we had tile floors, you know, beds on both sides. And about 2.30, I don't know what it was, but they took a metal trash can. And the drill sergeant took that and just hurled that thing down, I mean, up and then down that out. I mean, I thought the world come to an end. We jumped up out of bed all because there was a drop of water on a faucet that didn't get wiped down. The, you know, there was a little bit of water uh, in the shower area or there was a little smidge of paper or perhaps the toilet paper wasn't folded at 45 degree angle. I mean, he, he motivated us. Huh? He motivated us seriously. And, and if you ever needed any motivation, they can help you out. So you've got to have some motivation to get this bought for God lifestyle. And so today, I, I, you know, I tried to motivate you last week, but we learned that Jesus got mad because he came to the temple, the physical temple, the building, the church of that day, and, and they were selling doves, and they, were, they had them marked up ten times what they were worth because they knew people didn't have no other way, and they were gouging people, and Jesus grabbed the tables and began to overturn them, and he got so mad. And so I said, hey, if we are the temple of the Holy Spirit, when are you going to get mad about how you're treating the temple? If this is the temple of the Holy Spirit and we just put anything in here and, and we don't care if our arteries clog up, we don't care if, if you know, if we can, you know, some of you, you out of breath, you can't even tie your shoes. It'd be a good place to look straight ahead not, not, and nobody, you know. Uh, God, if, if he's going to live here, we want him to live in a good house. Amen. Now, I understand, listen to me. Now, I know some of y'all are going to say, well, what's the sense? We're all going to die. And that's true. It is important that a man wants to die, and after this, the judgment, according to Hebrews 9 and 27. But let us live while we are here. Amen. Let us live and let us represent while we're here. So today we're going to talk about eating and exercising. On Wednesday night, it'll be team or T for, for, for team building and that circle of friends around you. I cannot be here because of... I'll be in the South Georgia camp meeting. But I looked across our, um, our inner staff guys, and Brother Eddie Martinez is one that goes to pump iron. I said, now, Brother Eddie, we're going to sit down and we'll talk about this. We've already been talking about it. He's going to present that final message to you about building teams on Wednesday night right here, the teamwork of support, because you need a teamwork. Uh, you, need a, you need some people that's cheering. You need some people that's asking you the hard questions. You need some people that will look eye to eye with you and tell you, uh, oh, we sang it, that will speak what is true. Not what makes you feel goosebumpy or, or happy or, you know, touchy-feely. We ask God to help us by saying, Lord, please speak what's true. Thy word, O oh God, is truth. And sometimes we shy away from the truth because we don't like to hear what the truth is. But the truth, the Bible says, will set us free. Amen. I'm going to tell you something. When we get on the scales, it's going to tell us the truth. We look in the mirror, it's going to tell us the truth. I know some of y'all are going to say, oh, Lord, that's a Nazi pastor now. Ain't no way that joker's going crazy. What, I'm, just, I'm just trying to tell you the truth. The truth will set us free. So let me move on. Um, but, but, you know, for Steve, you've got to understand, his, his big deal was gluttony. He, he loved to eat, and he didn't like to exercise. 
And so, it, but, but these things are transferable. Yours m- might be lying. Yours might be dishonesty. Yours might be a lack of integrity. Yours might be a vast array of things. It could be anything else. These are all transferable. And all of these things keep us from having a body for God. Are you with me? Say amen. So we're going to apply these keys to our life. But God wants us to live a life that He has designed for us. So I ask you, what is today? What is the sin that's holding you back today from having the body for God? Is it just because you won't get off the couch and let go of the remote control? Maybe, I mean, maybe you pray better laying back, you know, or with pizza and, and a soda. And I'm not knocking that. I love pizza and I love soda and all that stuff. And I know it's probably none of it good for you. But, but... But we have to start somewhere. And I'll say this. You cannot remote control yourself to a healthy body. I, I've bought all kind of exercise stuff. And, you know, I've done it, But I have found out you've got to work whatever you buy. I found out that the, the, that the road out front, I mean, I pay taxes. I might as well be able to walk on it. And, and I could just go walk. And it don't cost me nothing except my taxes every year. Might as well walk on that uh, Asphalt treadmill, or y'all hear me say amen. But what is it that's holding you back? What is the addiction that's tying you down? Turn with me to 1 Thessalonians chapter number th- uh, 4, verses 3 through 5. I want you to see this. He says, for this is the will of God. Now that's a powerful statement. When I say, now this is the will of God, your sanctification. Now that is a scary word for a lot of people. Sanctification means that cleaning up. When I talked a moment ago about all those things you used to be, and now people say, wow, you know, boy, don't lie like you used to. You used to lie every chance he got. Huh? He don't beat his dog no more and his wife, and he pays his child support now, and, you know, he's, he's, he's not defrauding the government anymore. He's, uh, he, he's really changed. He's turned over newly. No, what it is, he's given his heart to the Lord, and it's made a difference in his life. Are you hearing me say amen? It's made a difference in his life. For this is the will of God that your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality. Now see, he, when he's talking to the church at Thessalonica right here, they didn't have a gluttony problem, so to speak. They had a sexual problem. Are y'all hearing me? He said, for this is the will of God that you abstain from sexual immorality. Uh, verse number four, that each of you should, what's this, know how, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor. Not in the passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God. See, what he says, that we need to learn how to possess this body that God has given us and quit acting like people that don't even know God. He said, you're not even taking care of your body as good as some of the people that don't even know God. Y'all listening to me? It's going to be all right. He said, but this is the will of God, your sanctification. What does that mean? It means your holy living. That we might say, Lord, here's my life, Lord. Do we really say, here's my life? Do we really say, Lord, take out of me what don't need to be in me? God, I'll give up whatever you want me to give up. Huh? If it's jelly donuts, if it's pizza, if it's porn, if it's this, if it's that, whatever it is in my life that's keeping me from having a physical body from God and a spiritual body from God, Lord, whatever it is, here's my life, Lord. So, uh, sanctification. But theirs in Thessalonica was not gluttony, gluttony, it was sexual immorality. You cannot have a bod for God and be fornicating. That's sex before marriage. Adultery is sex after marriage with someone other than your wife or husband. Are you with me? Say amen. So we've got to learn how to possess our body. We've got to learn how to manage our habits. Not in the passion of lust like the Gentiles. We've got to learn. You see, what an indictment. He says, but, but some people are taking care of their body. They don't even know God. And they're taking better care of the temple or you know, taking better care of their body. And I want to say this to you. Healthy habits will produce a healthy body. Now, I want to tell you something. Please don't, don't misunderstand me. I'm not a food Nazi. I love grilled pork chops. Huh? I love steak. And my favorite meat of all is deer. I love it. I do. And I'm not telling you I'm going to quit eating it. 
either of the ones I've mentioned. I'm going to say I'm going to do things in moderation. Are y'all hearing me say amen? I'm going to do things in moderation. And then there's some things that I need to cut out, that i got to cut out. And I'll just leave that between me and God and, and, and kill it. But uh, it amazes me how many people want a healthy body, but they don't want to give up anything. It's like going down to the car dealer and saying, hey, you know, I want all these things. I want these seats that warm up my backside when it's freezing outside. I want that... Uh, uh, the, the greatest radio, I, I, I want the cameras all around, I want all the greatest whatever the luxuries are nowadays, I want the latest, oh, oh I don't want to pay no more money, I want the options, but I don't want to pay for them. And that's what we want from God. We want to have all of the you know, bells and whistles, but we don't want to pay no price. That was a good place for an amen, some of y'all missed it. We want all of those things, but we don't want to pay no price. We don't want to say, oh, God, here it is. I'm willing to give up this or that. So, so let me take you to a case study, actually. His name is Daniel. He was a great man of God. He was a prophet. Let's look at him in chapter number 1. Uh, we see Daniel there. The Bible says, In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem. He besieged it. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand with some of the articles of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar to the house of his God. And he brought the articles into the uh, treasure house of his God. Then the king instructed uh, Aspenaz, the master of the eunuchs, to bring some of the children of Israel and some of the king's descendants and some of the nobles and the young men in whom uh, was no blemish, but good-looking. Uh, I know some of y'all probably think that was me. <laughs> right. Talking about you. Uh, gifted in all wisdom, possessing knowledge and quick to understand, who had ability to serve the king's palace, uh, with whom they might teach the language and the literature of the Chaldeans. Um, and the king appointed them for a daily provision. Watch this. And the king appointed them for the daily provision of the king's delicacies of the wine which he drank, and of the wine which he drank, and three years of training for them so that the end of the they might be brought before the king to serve them. Let me hold that and I'll just tell you what's going on here. They brought Daniel and all the good-looking guys and the well-educated guys. They deported them to Babylon from Jerusalem. So they took the best of the best. They took the brightest, the smartest, the, 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 the most learned. Are you with me? And the king said, here's what. I'm going to put them in a three-year apprenticeship program. I'm going to let them drink everything I drink, the best wines. I'm going to let them have all the delicacies, delicacies that I have, all the best foods, and all the greatest desserts. That's what I'm going to allow them to have. But Daniel decided not to defile himself with the king's meat. Now, there's a reason, and I'll tell you this. I'm not going to take time to read all that. But let me just say this. Daniel, uh, the king had come to power, and he put down an order, and that was his order. But Daniel said, I'm not going to defile myself with the king's food. You know why? The king's food, although it was rich, although it was good, all of these things, it was delicacies, it was all of that, but it had been offered to idols. And Daniel maintaining his spiritual integrity, he wasn't so much worried about his physical body, he said, but it had been forbidden by God to eat food that had been offered to an idol. Because there is no God but Jehovah. He says, I'm a jealous God. Have no other gods before me. So Daniel said, I will not eat of the king's meat. I will not taste the king's donuts. Are y'all hearing me? So he, he just made it that way. Now let me just tell y'all what happened. Um, uh, so in other words, here, let me say it like this. He just decided, I'm going to obey the Word of God. I'm going to obey the Word of God. And I'm going to tell you something. You can also have a bod for God if you're willing to obey the Word of God. It's the greatest book written on weight loss. If you've got people that are struggling with weight loss, hey, listen, just tell them to come for bod for God. We're going to have, yes, life groups are going to start, and there'll be about 12 weeks that goes with that, and it'll get them on track, the fast track, and you know, it gives them that camaraderie and that accountability and that lesson every week and that time to work out together and all of those things. But, but it'll put them on a good track. But the bottom line is you've got to say to yourself, I'm going to obey the Bible. I'm going to obey the Word of God. Now, Daniel made a decision. I don't want any of that. 
You know what the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 4, he says verse 20 and 22, or through 22, My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to all of their flesh. Exercise, I mean, learning the Bible, obeying the Bible is going to help you find health in your body. Steve said, Many times people have asked me, what pill did you take? What potion did you take? What doctor did you go see? Because you know the, how the craze is. Um, I don't know. I don't know all of them. If it's Jenny Craig or uh, the, uh, Marie Osmond or Nutrisystem or the Weight Watchers program or whatever, they're out there to sell diet plans. There ain't no doubt about it. But God's given you the book, and it just says, Obey my word, honor the temple, uh, which is mine, be motivated, eat and exercise right, have a teamwork of support. Are y'all hearing me say amen? So he, he said, I didn't take no potion. I didn't take no pill. He said, I simply decided to look at myself. And while I'm preaching and telling others about all kinds of things, he said, I am 340 pounds. And I'm telling people about their sin and omitting my own. See, they, you know, when we point at somebody else, we've got three pointing back at us. It's easy sometimes to find everyone else's fault and harder to find your own. But um, he said, I didn't take no... Here's the bottom line. Y'all ready? You need to get this. There's two things you need to get this if you don't get anything else. Number one, uh, when it comes to eating and exercising, y'all ready for this? It's real deep and real, real spiritual. You've got to eat less. That's just how it is. We have a stomach the size of our fist, and we eat the size of our head. That's how it is. Why? Because it tastes good. And Lord, there's kids starving in China. We don't want them to go to waste. Are y'all with me? I mean, I've used that excuse a lot of times, man. So, but, but we got to understand that our stomach is so big, and yet our portions um, you know, my dad used to say, you know, he had this mentality, if you put it on your plate, you was going to eat it. Or, when I was a small kid, if he put it on your plate, you was going to eat it. I took a many a whipping because I wasn't going to eat certain things. I took the whipping and still ate it. That's how it was. I didn't like eggplant. Don't like it today. Today, I don't have to eat it if I go to his house. <laughs> it just got something about getting older, I guess. But... But, but you see, now listen to me, along with eating less, we've got to eat better. Are y'all hearing me? Now, and here's the deal, you've got to catch this because I promise you this is a fact. I remember when I was in the military, I loved Coca-Cola. I mean, the real deal, the red stuff. I'm not talking about the Diet Coke and the caffeine-free and all that stuff. I just loved genuine, real Coke. You remember when they come out with new Coke? Nobody liked it. Everybody hated it. And so they went back to, to the real deal and they wrote genuine, you know, the real deal. But I loved that. You know, it was great. And I'll never forget when I first started thinking about calories, I was like, what is a calorie? And um, so I decided, well, if I'm going to take in too many calories, maybe I can go to Diet Coke. And the first one I ever put in my mouth, it was like, what in the world? How in the world does people drink this? Huh? It tastes like... Whatever, I don't know, medicine, something, I don't know. And I wasn't going to drink it. I said, I'll just get fat. You know? But here's the deal. Uh, when your wife likes the taste of it or whatever, she don't buy the other stuff, just buys what she likes, you learn to drink it. <laughs> so I started drinking it, and then next thing you know, doggone, I like it. And if I taste a real Coke, I'm like, whoo, that's too sweet. I go to a restaurant, and I'm eating, and... I said, oh, honey, I really think this is Coke, not Diet Coke. And I don't even got to see it. I just know that it's, you know what I'm saying? Now, both of them are bad for you. <laughs> are you with me? I know, I'm just, I'm sorry to tell you that. But nonetheless, what I'm saying is this. You can acclimate your body to eating better. I, I tried to tempt Brother Brian here a couple months ago because we used to have, you know, many bring in two or three dozen donuts and, and the workers and whatever, they gather around and, you know, and I started thinking, man, I got a Bob for God series coming up. I got to curtail some of this, you know. We got to, you know, and you know, it costs a whole lot more to bring fruit trays back there than it does donuts. It's cheap to get fat. Huh? 
Man, you can buy a ham hock and put it in the crock pot with some lima beans or something. Man, it's cheap to get fat. It costs a lot of money to stay healthy, it seems like. And I don't know if, you know, anyway. Um, but I tried to, to, I said, Brian, come on back, man. We got a, you know, this was about we was doing Servolution skit. I said, man, we got all kind of, no, no, I don't eat them no more. I was like, man, who, what are you talking about? I don't eat them no more. Quit with it. I said, what? <laughs> Quit with it. I want to check his temperature or something, you know. But, uh, but what I'm saying is this. If you start setting aside things, here's the deal. It takes about 21 days to readjust your habit and about 66 days to really etch it in stone. I wish I could get Kelly for 21 days in a row to put her seatbelt on. For 21 days. And if I could get her to do it for 66 days, she'd never question it again. She'd just put it on. Click. Y'all with me? Say amen. Y- y- y'all tell her about when you see her. All right? Anyway, uh, just a thought, uh, you know, about making habits and whatever. But see, um, we want to eat what makes us happy and not what makes us healthy. Now, this morning, I looked at those donuts, and I said, man, it'd be hypocritical for me to eat two of these donuts and then go out and tell them. So I grabbed a few pieces of pineapple. Are you all with me? I grabbed a couple of berries. And, uh, you know, I think about John the Baptist, you know, he was eating locusts and wild honey. I imagine the first time he bit in one of them locusts, that's pretty rough, probably. Y'all, y'all watch some of that Fear Factor or some of the survival deal? You know, I could do any of that height stuff. As long as I'm tied off and I'm satisfied, that's all right. But I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't eat some of that stuff those guys are eating. It just ain't flying with me. Are y'all with me? Say amen. I went down there to Disney. I believe it's at Disneyland or Disney World. Man, they had that little thing set up, and I thought, oh, my goodness, you could actually see them. And I said, you know, I wouldn't mind going down there to, you know, to jump off a building and try to go to a car swinging around on this or that. That's all good. I mean, it'd be scary, don't get me wrong. But, um, but I ain't eating horse intestines or testicles or nothing like that. Y'all with me say amen. That is not, not me. But, uh, you see, if you and I would adjust our appetite, if we, if we did pick up an apple and a bottle of water instead of a monster. Now, I'll tell you something. My wife is the monster Nazi. And um, those energy drinks, if she sees you with one, she would just shoot you on the spot. Uh, no, she won't really shoot you, but uh, she'll scold you vehemently. <laughs> Are you hearing me? And, and I know some of you used to walk around, man, if, you, if it was beer, you'd been drunk off one of them size. You was, uh, I mean, it was about like that, about that big around. It was like a piggy bank. I mean, <laughs> but, but listen, Proverbs 30, or 22, 23 and 2 says, Put a knife to your throat if you're a man given appetite. Huh? Put a knife to your throat if you're a man. Y'all thought I was playing, but there it is. Put a knife to your throat if you're a man given appetite. So, in other words, we have to control ourselves. And it's hard. That's why fasting is hard. It's difficult. If we say, Lord, I'm, I, I'm not going to eat today. I'm going to pray for the Guatemala Project. Man, I'm going to tell you, here, when you get ready to do something like that, every food commercial, you've never seen so many food commercials in all your life. And you pass by, you know, Highway 40 and Kings Bay Road and the flip sign that's up there where we had Bod for God this past week and all that stuff, it will all of a sudden it'll be a chocolate delight. It won't be banking at BB&T or wherever. It'll, it'll be something food-wise. So, so, listen, you got to eat less. That's how it is. And if you eat less, then what you do eat, you got to eat healthier. Listen, it's little bitty changes that'll make a big, big difference in your life. I'm not saying just, you know, uh, all of a sudden change everything in your whole world in one day. I can say this. As you get around people that are trying to do the same thing, you next, next thing you know, you say, hey, how about let's go to track? Maybe we'll walk three or four laps. And today we'll drink water instead of sweet tea. You know, little things. And next thing you know, you look at the scale and you say, wow, man, things are happening. You've got to tighten your belt up a little bit. Are you all hearing me say amen? The Bible says this in 1 Corinthians 10, 31. Therefore, whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. So I don't think God's pleased for us to uh, do some of the things we do. Now, no, 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 let me just pick on Mike for a minute because I don't believe I can indict you for something that I don't indict myself for. Uh, there, there's times 
I, I feel like I eat in moderation. Kelly and I will go somewhere, and it's not that we're trying to be cheap, although there's nothing wrong with being frugal. We'll oftentimes order one meal and share it. Um, now, and sometimes if I'm at the right place, I'll order water because their water's decent and taste worthy. <laughs> but then sometimes I don't. But um, um, there are times in my life, and some of you've been with me, that we went certain places to eat, and Lord, did we eat. I mean, hey, let's just face it. If I'm going to eat crab legs, I'm not eating three crab legs. I ain't going to do that. I'm not even, I ain't going down there to pay $32 to eat three crab legs. Huh? Now, when I go down to eat crab legs, I'm going to pile them up. But I don't do it every week. Are you all hearing me? What I'm saying is doing things in moderation. Doing things, you know, keeping tabs on yourself. Doing things, you know, moderately. So let me say this. So here it is. I told you two things you got to remember. Eat less. Next thing is this. Are you all ready? Exercise more. Exercise more. Now listen, I've been with people before, and I'm not going to call no names or look around. I'll just say this. I've been with people that got mad if we couldn't park in the first two spots at Walmart. Don't you know that they are labeled for handicapped people? And we needed to walk from the back of the parking lot anyway. Y'all with me? Sometimes you just need to take the stairs. Now, Kelly, she, she will get mad with me and aggravated with me. Now, I don't think you got no choice at our hospital because you got to get on the slowest elevator in the world to go up 10 feet and then wait on the slowest door to open. I'm impatient, man. I like to get in them high-rise elevators. Sheen, man, you're at the top, man, 31 stories in, you know, 15 seconds or something like that. But Kelly will tell you, I'm so aggravated about being slow on elevators, I'll take, the, I'll take the stairs, I don't care if it's 10 stories. And then people that walk with me are saying, wait up, pastor, wait up. Anybody that's been with me to a theme park knows that because I've got long legs and I just normally head on out. Yeah, <laughs> she's been to a few theme parks. So I, I'm just simply saying this, sometimes taking the stairs is better. Sort of gets your heart up a little bit. Now, I know that, they, that I know everybody going to do that. And I, know, I don't expect Brother Ray to take the stairs. I don't expect some of you to do I, I'm saying little things will make a difference. You've got to exercise more. If that means parking further away, if that means calling your partner and saying, hey, let's go walking this morning. If that means, hey, let's go out to the church and pray. That's a no, noble concept. Let's pray and then walk around the church property a time or two. That'll get your heart rate up. Are you hearing me? So you've got to eat less. You've got to exercise more. Now, here's the scripture that, that Steve said. I, he said, man, this was my, he said, man, this was my highlighted scripture. First Timothy tells us that bodily exercise profited little. He said, well, I'm 340 pounds. I'd tell him, bodily exercise profited little. He said, until I really got deep into what God's word's trying to say, bodily exercise does profit. What he's doing there when he said that, that was not, he was not saying bodily exercise just profits you little. He was making a spiritual comparison to spiritual exercise and bodily exercise. And he says bodily exercise will profit you a little bit. But spiritual exercise, what is that? Reading the Bible, praying, watching godly things, studying the Word of God, coming to a fellowship among like believers. Are you hearing me? He said these things will really profit you. So um, let, me, let me share with you, um, if I may, what Dr. Liz Baroni said. She was a guest of, of Steve's, and obviously she's um, not here. But he was talking about the fact that, um, or he asked her the question, why we should exercise, because we live in what Steve calls a sitting, sitting culture. And uh, he had Dr. Baroni there, and she's a medical doctor. She said, I think that's a great question. I think everybody in this room is very, very smart, and they knew before we did in the medical community how important exercise is with regards to helping with weight loss, helping with many, many diseases. And then it took a while for medical literature to catch up to all of you folks who are so smart out there to show that it reduces also the tendency of having a heart attack, death from a heart attack, 
various cancers. It helps with mental health. It helps with addictions. Bodily exercise is good for you. Sweating is good for you. Some of you hadn't sweat in years, except at a traffic light when your AC was broke. She said, so many, many benefits. But you know, the Surgeon General, the new Surgeon General, she said, even last year, she was saying that we should exercise and pay attention to healthy lifestyles. Not just to lower our weight and for being light. You know, um, she says, but, but not just for lowering our weight, but for the, all the benefits that's coming out of having a body for God. Something that is uh, helping us with, with cancers and uh, headaches and various other things. And, and I'm not a medical doctor, but I, so I take their advice and I believe they're in the know. So there's something you got to do, and, and, and here it is. And I want you to get this because I, I don't want to just leave you hanging with good knowledge about eating exercise. Here's the kind of the next steps. If, if you want to take notes, it would be a good time. If you want to jot something down, this would be a good time. You've got to set a goal. You've actually got to set a goal and make it manageable, make it attainable, make it something that's realistic. If you weigh 300 pounds, a, a lofty goal might be to lose 10 pounds, you know, next month. That may not be too bad. Um, if you're, you know, closer to what your size ought to be, 10 pounds a month might be a little strong. But you've got to, to set a goal. Maybe your goal is this, that I'm going to write down everything I eat this week. I'm going to write it down. Now, hey, you know what? I don't have my phone with me, but... Dan was telling me last week about an app. What's the name of that app? All the technology we've got. Kelly downloaded one. It might be that one. I'm not sure. But anyway, that actually, as long as you've got your phone with you, it's keeping up with how many miles you're walking today, how many calories you're burning. That's crazy. And where's the technology? And in the Bible, let me tell you something. Daniel told us that knowledge was going to increase before the great day of the Lord. We're seeing that come to pass. Stand with me, if you will. But let me say this. Here's some next steps for you. Your, ne your next step might be go ahead and download you an app like Fat Secret or Lose It or, or one of the weight loss apps and start holding yourself accountable. Listen, here's another good next step for you. Whether or not you're signed up for other groups, sign up for one of our Bod for God groups. Listen, they're not here with us today, I don't think, but I have talked with, uh, well, I have uh, Shane and Chantel Schumann. They're going to lead one of our groups. James and Jill Riendo. Uh, of course, James being a bodybuilder himself, and then Chad and Natalie Gay. Uh, Chad is sort of the buffed up type as well. And we might have to add more, depending on how many groups. But that might be a next step for you, a good next step, is to sign up for one of the Bod for God groups. Because listen to me now, yes, you need to get in shape physically, but it's not just physical, it's about your spirit man too. At the same time we talk about pushing back that cheeseburger, we're going to start talking about adding some prayer. Adding some worship time in the presence of the Lord when we say, here's my life, Lord. Adding some time where we're in the presence of God, around the people of God. So we want to build up both bodies, the physical body and the spiritual body. So do one of those next steps. Download one of those apps. Sign up for a Body for God group. That's a good start right now. Write out perhaps all of your food. And listen, well, here's what I'd love for you to do. Email me and let me know what God's doing in your life. What he's Mike.sains at HarvardWC. Or just go to at HarvardWC.com and, and you can holler at us there. And, and we can know some of the things that's going on. We're going to pray. And then Pastor Josh is going to come. But I'm believing right now that God's going to touch you in the things that you're going to do. Let us pray.